Our goal here is to study only type 1 cross-sections of the, the production function. As you can see on the left, and recalling from the previous chapter, type 1 means that the relationship between quantity and water holding fertilizer fixed is always concave. Diminishing returns begins immediately. So what I need to do is flip the axes of graph number one. Let me label this graph number one. So that in graph number two, I'll have the water holding fertilizer fixed axis going vertically and the quantity of corn axis going horizontally. The way to do that geometrically is to draw a 45 degree line in graph 1 and a 45 degree line in graph 2 and then we're flipping this graph around the 45 degree line you can see that if you if you do that kind of flip then you do switch the axes the way I've indicated them in graph number two. And furthermore, in the initial part of the graph, this part of the graph, where the black line is above the 45 degree line in graph one, in graph two is going to have to be below the 45 degree line. And maybe I should make it a little bit longer. And then in graph number one, in the, the portion here, where the black line is below the 45 degree line, in graph number two, it's going to have to be above the 45 degree line. So that's the shape of graph two. We haven't done anything substantive. We just flipped the axes. In graph number three, I'll keep Q on the horizontal axis, but now I want variable cost, which I abbreviate by VC on the vertical axis. Variable cost, you'll remember, is the price of water times water. Now in graph 2, we have water. So the only difference between graph 2 and graph 3 is that the vertical axis is multiplied in graph 3 by PW. Let's consider a few cases. Suppose PW is equal to 1. Suppose water costs a dollar a gallon then graph 3 is going to look exactly the same as graph 2. Now suppose water costs two dollars a gallon. Well two dollars a gallon is uh, uh, is two dollars for every uh, let's see how to say this for every half gallon it would cost a dollar. Two dollars for one gallon one dollar for, for a half gallon. So if I measured water in terms of half gallons the price would be one dollar per half gallon. So in that sense, regardless of what the price of water is, you could always say that the price of water is 1 by changing the the uh, the units that you use to measure water. In which case, making those changes, graph 3 would always look like graph 2. If you don't like that argument, there's another argument. Okay, suppose the, the water price of water is $2 a gallon. Then and variable cost would be 2 times w. Geometrically, that's like taking graph number 2 and stretching it out by a factor of 2 so that the so that the new points would be twice let me make it a little bit easier to see twice as high as the old points and therefore the vc curve would be a uh, stretching of graph number 2 by a factor of 2. But that doesn't change the basic shape of it, and the basic shape is the only thing we care about. Similarly, if the price of water were half a dollar a gallon, then you take graph number 2 and you shrink it by a factor of 2, so everything would be, the new points would all be a half as, as tall as the old points, but the basic shape is still going to be the same. And the only thing we care about is basic shapes. So the bottom line is, Graph number three I've drawn correctly. I, it doesn't 
I don't have any numbers here, so all I care about is the basic shape, and the basic shape is going to be starting at zero and upward sloping and convex. Now, the reason it starts at zero turns out all I'll do that in the other color. All variable cost curves start at zero. And the reason is, if Q is zero, that means you don't want to produce anything. If you don't want to produce anything, why would you buy any variable inputs? You wouldn't. There'd be no point. You have complete freedom of how much of the variable input to buy. You just buy zero if you're not going to produce anything. And so if Q is zero, variable cost is zero, and that's why all variable cost curves start at zero. So it starts at zero, and it's upward sloping, and it's convex. How about total cost? Well, total cost is fixed cost plus variable cost. We're going to have Q on the horizontal axis. Fixed cost is just fixed, right? It just looked like a horizontal line. So basically, in order to get graph number four from graph number three, what you do is to take graph number three and then you move every point up by a fixed amount. So you shove graph number three up by the amount of the variable costs. So it starts at fixed costs because at Q equals zero, we know that there are no variable costs. That's what we said here. There are no variable costs at Q equals zero. But there is a fixed cost, so at, when at Q is equal to zero, you start at the fixed cost, and then you just draw, draw exactly the same shape that you drew in graph number three again. It's just moved up by the amount of the fixed costs. There. So that's what total cost looks like. So we've derived the total cost curve in the short run for type 1.